Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video, I wanna talk about SPs. So, the SP doesn't technically even exist. The SP was created by you, so it could mirror something back to you. So for those of you who are manifesting a specific person back in your life, The purpose of this is to shift your consciousness. And I have a bunch of videos coming out uh, that I recorded over the weekend on quantum jumping. In order to jump, in order to jump into the reality that you prefer, you have to shift your consciousness. You have to shift your awareness. You have to remember that that timeline that you desire already exists in the quantum field. So... This video will help you shift your consciousness and look at how you how you can solve the problem or how you could shift into that reality like this. Okay, so in other videos, I've talked about the scale of consciousness. Okay, I have my own that I developed from Dr. David R. Hawkins. Talk about 3D consciousness, which is I am the effect of my circumstances. I am the effect of what's happening around me. It's fear-based and it's primarily victim mentality. 4D consciousness is I am the cause of my reality. I am the creator of my reality. I am powerful. I have the ability to manifest anything that I desire. It's a very powerful energy to be in. 5D consciousness is we are all one. We are all one. So I've done some videos where I've said, we are God. We are God. We are God having an experience here on earth. There are no others. There's no SP. There's no third party. You're the only conscious being in your creation. You're handing these people, these avatars, these people that you've created, you're handing them the script. This is what I want to learn today. This is what I want to experience. This is how I'm going to handle things. You're handing everybody the script. You are God. We believe that we are in love with this other person. I'm not debating that. You could be in love with them. You Maybe you're not in love with them. Maybe you're just attached to them. Maybe you just want them in your life. Whatever. I'm not debating that. But the primary reason why you're focused on that specific person, on, on creating or jumping into the timeline where you're in a committed, amazing relationship with that person. And I did another video. It's called The Seven Mirrors of Relationships. Go and check that video out. Every single person, every relationship that you have fits into one of those mirrors. You're, you're creating other people in your experience to mirror back to you something. And there's seven of those. Go and check out that video. I highly recommend it. In terms of SPs, usually, usually, it's the one mirror. And this is the mirror where this person is reflecting back to you aspects of yourself that have been lost, taken from you, or you gave them away. So that SP, and, and just stick with me here because I'm going to help you jump. I'm going to help you jump to a space where you can easily bring in that SP by doing this one thing. Recognize what it is that that SP brings up for you that is either lost, was taken away, or you gave up in your life. So for instance, if I go back <clears throat> when I came into the understanding of those seven mirrors, I went back and I'm still going back. I had another quantum jump this weekend about those mirrors. I keep going back to all of these relationships that I've had using that template. And I created a template. If you want the Excel workbook, just message me, just email me and I will email it to you for free, send you the, the workbook to work with. 
I keep going back to all of these relationships with that same mirror template. Okay, so these are the mirrors in this relationship. If this is true, if we're, these are really mirrors, this is me creating a person in my life to mirror back certain things that I need to know in order for me to expand, in order for me to expand my consciousness, shift my awareness. If that's true, let's go and look at these. So I have been using those mirrors to go back to certain relationships. So I have this one relationship. It's the epitome of what I'm explaining. I thought that I, I thought that this person was the person. I spent two years with this person. And honestly, it was one of the most toxic relationships I've ever been in. I look prior to learning about the mirrors. I would look back at that relationship and I felt a lot of shame. I felt a lot of guilt. I felt I was stupid. Like, why did I keep going? Why did I allow myself to be treated this way? But when I learned about the mirrors and I go back, to with those mirrors and I look at this relationship and I say, well, what was it that kept me going back into this relationship? And this was a relationship where we would be together for two days and then we'd be broken up for three days. Two years, we went like this. Every couple of days we were on, then we were off, on, off, on, off. And it was, it was awful. But what was it about that person that kept, I kept going back? Like, why did I keep doing that? Using the template of these mirrors, I was able to determine, and I determined this for a lot of a lot of the other relationships. This person was mirroring back to me a piece of myself that I had given up. I was in a point in my life where I had I had to have so much control. Because see, things seem to just be so out of control in my environment. I felt that I needed to worry all the time, that I needed to overthink, that I needed to stress, that I needed to plan out every moment of every single day so that I could have control over what was going on in my life. That if I gave up that control, my life would go even more chaotic. Okay, so my mindset was, we can't have fun. We can't let go of our problems. We need to be constantly stressed out all the time. This person comes into my life. This person was the complete, absolute opposite of that. If I got $200 for whatever, $200 comes into me, I would literally sit down with the $200 and I would say, okay, I need to pay. We can't have fun. Can't buy myself anything. Can't spend anything on myself. $200. Let's see. I'm going to pay the electric bill. I'm going to do this. I would, I would, I have responsibilities. I need to be misresponsible here. I would take that $200 and I would use it for the most practical purposes. That seems logical, right? This person would get $200 and say, hey, let's go to the casino Let's eat like kings and queens and let's blow this all on roulette. Let's blow whatever's left on blackjack. And I would say, oh, that sounds great. Me, Miss Control, Miss Responsible, would just throw everything to the side and go and just blow $200. So, so I'm looking at these situations and I'm like, well, what was it? What did I give up? This person brought fun into my life. It brought, we could leave all our problems out here and we could just, in this moment, let's just be spontaneous. Let's just do something fun. And it, it's not about, it wasn't about the money. It wasn't about being careless. It wasn't be about, about doing that. It was about just, can we just, in this moment, maybe this is our last moment on earth, can we just have fun? Can we just laugh? Can we just get drunk and blow our money and whatever happens tomorrow happens tomorrow? Like this carefree spirit, which was the total opposite of the person that I was being in my life. In my life, I was like, I got to have absolute control. 
Can't spend money. Can't have fun. God help me if anybody sees me having fun because they know I have all these problems. I need to keep worrying about these problems. I can't let these problems go. I need to, I need to keep worrying about these things. This person was like, who cares about problems? Let's just go have fun. Um, every experience, like when we were together, every experience that we had was just a riot. He would say, okay, you're British. I'm going to be Australian. We're going to go into this restaurant and we're going to act like this. And we had terrible accents. It was just constant spontaneity and fun and just being carefree and letting go of the things. I associated those things with that person. When I was with that person, it was like this, that I could just get into that energy and not worry about everything. Just let go of those things. Those were aspects that I had in myself, but I gave them up. I gave them up. I said, no, you need to be responsible. You need to do this. You need to do that. If you look at people who have gone through, let's say, childhood trauma, they're a certain way today because their childhood innocence was taken from them. They, for some, they no longer feel the ability to to be innocent, to look at the world in an innocent way, to look at the world like it's positive, that those aspects were ripped from them when they were a child. And, and you can look at a lot of trauma survivors. Um, those things, certain aspects have been taken from them by other people. In these relationships where you want this SP. I'm not trying to convince anybody. If you want the SP, have the SP. But the, the key to get there, the key to get there is focus on the feeling that they bring forth in you that you're trying to recreate. You want this person so that you could feel a certain way. Other relationships, I had a sense of security. So I had one particular relationship where I trusted this person 100%, 100%, never doubted the person, 100% knew that they were loyal, they would never cheat. I felt very secure in that relationship. And I remember thinking about this relationship when it ended. I'll never find that security again. I will never be able to trust anyone like I trusted that person. That's an aspect that I gave up. That's an aspect over, because of my own trauma. I gave up believing that I could have security, that I could just be secure in myself. Never mind if I bring someone else in, am I going to feel secure with them? I had a belief that I couldn't generate that within myself. So even though I broke off that relationship, I mourned the fact that I will never have a relationship where I'm going to feel that secure. Uh, that person loved me unconditionally. It didn't matter. It, nothing mattered. That person just loved me unconditionally. No matter how badly I behaved, no matter how good I be, they just loved me unconditionally. And I thought after that, and I ended it, it was the right thing to do, but I ended it. And I mourned that relationship for a long time because I thought I will never be able I will never be able to get that back. We'll never be able to get that sense of security that I had with that person or that sense of being unconditionally loved because it was really the first time in my life that I had experienced unconditional love from another person. And that person represented those aspects that I had given up or were taken from me. When I look back at that situation, I think I associated those aspects, the security, the trust, the unconditional love with that person. I didn't realize that those were things that I could have tapped in on my own. Okay, so in terms of this person doesn't even exist. The third person, the third party doesn't exist. Your parents don't even exist. 
on a universal level. 5D, we are all one. There are no others. Everyone is a representation of aspects of you. Let's look at this from, from a universal perspective. So if I did an ancestry.universe.com test, I could literally trace my roots back to God. Right? I did ancestry.com. They tested my DNA. They said, up oh, 99.97% Irish. I said, oh, my ancestors all came from Ireland. I'm Irish. I identify as Irish. If we did ancestry.universe.com and tested our DNA, we all go back to God. God, God created us. And then Bashar talks about this all the time. There are only approximately 250 to 300,000 oversouls on this planet. For each oversoul, there's roughly 26,000 souls. Okay, so, so think about this. You have God. We're, we're doing our ancestry. You have God. You have the oversoul. There's about, let's say, 300,000 for 7 to 8 billion people on the planet. 300,000 oversouls. And under each of those oversouls, there's roughly 26,000 souls. So there are 26 versions of us that are running around this planet. So for you, for you, whoever's listening to this, each and every one of you, you are one of 26,000 people that report into an oversoul. That oversoul reports into God. So there's your, there's your ancestry DNA for, on a universal level. When you're meeting people, so there are 26,000 versions of you. Now we're going to get into um, soulmates, twin flames, and divine partners. When you're meeting another person, they are you. They are you. They're just another version of you. You all report into the same oversoul. Okay? It's unlikely that you're down here on earth messing around with other souls. It's more likely that you are interacting with your own soul family. Okay? So that's like 26,000 people. You're all, we're all brothers and sisters. We're all the same. We all come from the same thing. We're all the same soul. So you're out here bumping around, meeting people, going out with guys, going out with girls, whatever, whatever you're doing. Working for people. And you meet someone and you say, oh my God, this is a soulmate. Of course it's a soulmate. Of course it's, we're all soulmates. Our ancestry, DNA from the universe, we're all created by God. There's an oversoul. And then we all report into an oversoul. So there's roughly about 300,000 oversouls on the planet. We're all soulmates. Whether, like, no matter what way you look at it. Oh, well, I come from this oversoul. Maybe this person. Okay, but we all report into God. We were all created by God. Right? God is our parents. God is who birthed us. When people say to me, I have to be with this person. They're my soulmate. I have to be with this person. They're my twin flame. And a park divine partner over here. Because I think that's an important thing to, to spend some time on. I say to them, well, why do you feel, well, they're the other half of my soul. Makes sense. It makes sense that, that you feel that way. Because they're bringing to the table aspects of yourself that you have left behind. They're bringing to the, the relationship 
aspects of you that you desire. So of course, I get it. Of course. And I used to believe this too. Of course, I get it. That's why we believe this is the other half of our soul. When I'm with this person, I can be myself. I can can feel this. I When I'm not with this person, I can feel this. How about if you just realize that you could feel that anytime? Neville says feeling is the secret. It is absolutely 100% the secret. You can tap into those feelings regardless of who you're with. I keep hitting the microphone. So sorry if there's like unnecessary noise. Um, I talk like an Italian. I was raised with a lot of Italians. So this is how we talk. Um, when someone says to me, this is my twin flame, I'm supposed to be with them. I met them. We had an amazing experience. I, I never felt like this before in my entire life. And then they left. And that's the twin flame template. I say, get your head out of your... I did a video on soulmates, twin flames, and divine partners. Yes. Yes, they are your soul. They're not a part of your soul. You're not a half. You're not a quarter. You're not incomplete. You're a full soul. You didn't come here incomplete. You actually came here whole and complete. And throughout your life, you started to let go of aspects that you used to be. Because when you were born, you had everything. You had it all. When I was born, I was perfect. I was perfect. Over time, because of circumstances, I put lenses on, began changing how I saw reality, began to be more fearful, began to feel less free, began to feel less carefree. I started to feel like I should be afraid. You're not a half of a soul. You're not a part of a soul. You're a full soul. The person is only mirroring back to you the feelings that you want to feel. So how do you draw that person in? You feel those feelings. You, you identify, using the mirror, identify the feelings that you love when you're with this person and recreate them within yourself. Tap into those feelings. Hi guys, I just wanted to share some exciting news. I just released my quantum jumping course. Go on over to my website and check it out. I have a special offer for a limited time that you're definitely gonna to wanna to take advantage of. This course is not only to show you how you can manifest the cars, the houses, the money, and the lovers. It's about becoming the person who lives their life to the fullest and who has access to all the abundance the universe has to offer. It's about who you become in the process, your truest and most authentic self. Go over to www.yourdivineessence.com for more info. Hey, hit that like button down below if you like this video. Subscribe to my channel for more content. Hit the notification bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video. For many of us, when we're looking at those relationships that we want to bring back in, it's not because we're in love with the person. I'm not saying that we're in love with them and we're not in love. I can go back to my relationships and I can clearly see I do truly love those people. I'm not in love with them. I don't want to be with them. I truly do love those people. Was it really wanting them back in my life because I love them? I wanted them back in, in my life because they made me feel a certain way about myself that I felt I couldn't tap into when they weren't present. If you identify just brainstorm, pull like the, the top five feelings that that person brings up for you. It's usually un, like an unconditional love or security or safety, or I could just be myself, hone in on like those top five qualities, manifest those qualities, be those qualities, know that you could just be those qualities.
how you bring the person back. All right, guys. Good luck.